Ross, I want to if you are able to stay, I want to get into the other quarterback that got traded today and I want to get your thoughts upon it because this might be one of the most active off seasons that we've had in a while in terms of quarterback movement. I would love to talk about this. <laughs> so Carson Wentz who got basically kicked out of Indianapolis, let's just say it bluntly, was was a big reason why they underachieved last year. I was on the Carson Wentz bandwagon saying that this was going to take the Colts to the next level. And they looked like that midway through the season. And then you lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are now picking number one overall back-to-back years in a clutch game in which would have sent you to the playoffs um, as the final game of the season. I think that was kind of the last chapter of the Carson Wentz Colts era, to say the least. But guys, new chapter opened, and new chapter opened for both teams. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on it first, because I know there's been a lot of jokes uh, about Carson Wentz, too, the Wash uh, the Washington Commanders, but in terms of quarterback play in the NFC, this might actually be good enough to do something. But guys, Ross, your thoughts first on Carson Wentz to the Washington Commanders. I I just I'm gonna plug the hell. Um, not even um, no shame in this one, especially because I gotta say I did a show a couple. Two and a half weeks back, you know, just talking about Lane Spots and quarterbacks. Yeah. And you can check this out on, on my Twitter and Instagram. I tweeted about this. It was I perfectly called Carson Wentz to the commanders. And yeah. I am very, very happy about it because it, it just makes sense. It's a disappointing quarterback, and he sent to one of the most disappointing franchises we've seen in the league today. They have one of the most disappointing performances. They have one of the most disappointing front offices. They had an extremely disappointing name announcement. They have a disappointing, um, you know, rebranding and uniforms and everything about them is just lacking. So why not bring in a bland and lacking quarterback in Carson Wentz? It was just a match made in heaven. It, that's exactly what happened here. If you take a look at the trade, the <laughs> commanders got fleeced. And they're also on the hook for Carson Wentz's contract as well. Damn, Heineke's not even that bad. You should have just rolled with him. Well, to be to be fair, and then I'll throw to you guys as well. Heineke kind of proved towards the latter part of last season, and even in the beginning of last season, is that as much as that miracle run was in almost beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the playoffs a year ago, you you could see that he he could not be a starting quarterback that but you could count that, on for that one surprise tag. A little bit too much. The if they want to trade for a quarterback, they could have gone one a lot cheaper. And the almighty Gardner Minshew, who's beyond underrated and could be a starting quarterback. Guys, your thoughts on Carson Wentz, who uh, we will now be seeing as Giants fans uh, for again. the next couple of years. Again. Again. <laughs> hey, we get, to, we get to play him twice a year. I'll take that. I think Washington – oh, my gosh. I think – I was trying to think of a good comparison to what that's like, but you know what? I think our buddy Noah Dibler said it best. Washington – having to settle for Carson Wentz after failing. <laughs> it's like he's got a new Ferrari and getting a huge soccer mom stitch. <laughs> Noah, that might be one of your better comments that I've seen. <laughs> yeah, no, you. I, I agree. It's not not the best. I think that was another move that reeked out of desperation. You you gave up, sure, on the surface, you gave, gave up a few third rounders, but you're taking a quarterback who, let's face it, has only had one great season. That was 2017. And ever since that injury, he's never really been the same. And now you're taking on his whole contract. Washington, what are you doing? That's another example of a poorly run NFL team. James, your thoughts on uh, Carson Wentz revisiting well, the NFC East once again? I'm more uh, – I, I... – I will uh, give my thoughts, but I am ready to hear your thoughts, Kyle, because the commanders are your closet football team. But we'll they hold off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, so, I, so I, I read a little bit into this, and this is, this is what was mind-boggling to me. This came down to the defining um, point. So, Ross, give a little love to the commanders as well. Russell Wilson was more likely than not going to be a Washington commander. But – Washington refused to add a Chase Young in that deal. Now, Chase Young is a very, very talented player. Don't get me wrong. Second overall pick. But I think that move is going to haunt them for, for you, a long time. Sorry, man. You absolutely trade Chase Young for Russell I know, Wilson. I know. I know. Absolutely I know. do. I, I, I would 100% too. I'm glad you're on that boat too because you – 
I mean, Chase Young, he's a, he's a great talent, but my, I love my co-host Alex. He's been right on the spot where he's been calling him overrated ever since like halfway through his rookie season, which mm-hmm. he kind of is. He's, he's a good player. Like, like, don't get me, I'm not calling him bad, but for all the media attention love he gets, he's a, he has a very shallow tool bag when it comes to pass rush. He's a great leader. He's athletic, but when it comes to actually getting, getting to the quarterback, which is what he's going to get paid to do, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, listen, we'll see what happens. Had a tremendous rookie season, and, and second year obviously fell short towards ACL last year as well, so we'll see how he comes back from that. I completely forgot about that, too. That <laughs> might have been even even a bigger incentive to potentially maybe even trade him to, to be that that was the fact that this is a guy you didn't want to trade when your entire defensive line is already stacked. This guy's coming off a huge injury to a defensive end, and he's only a second-year player. That's actually a big decision. It came down to not trading for Russell Wilson. But my thoughts on Carson Wentz in this deal, I, I, I'm at split ends. I think that when I break it down, I agree with you guys 99% of what you guys are saying. I think this is a desperation move. I think that this is – Probably not the right move. This is going shopping, as, as as Noah alluded to, shopping for a Ferrari and coming home with the with the station wagon. This is this is what this is. And when you look at it in Indianapolis, everybody was saying that was the dream scenario, right? Frank Reich was the Carson Wentz quarterback whisperer. That was going to be the guy. If that guy couldn't make it work, why is why is Ron Rivera and, and I don't I don't know who's running their offense right now, but whoever that is going to make it work. On top of the fact, when you break down the two offenses, Indianapolis has way better protection on the front Mm -hmm. with the offensive line. I like Antonio Gibson a lot, but Jonathan Taylor in year two proved that he may be the best running back in all of football. So it doesn't have that support. Kind of a similar situation in a Terry McLaurin, uh, Michael Pittman kind of category. Only really one wide receiver to really throw to. Only really one player to necessarily throw to. And... Washington, what we thought two years ago was a really, really great defense in this past season, was a horrendous defense. Indianapolis, not so much. State is, I think, the best defense in all of football in terms of the run stop and the passing game. So you're downgrading a lot from Indianapolis to Washington with the Carson Wentz. Now, me being a devil, a devil's advocate here, again, I, I said in almost all the trades that we talked about and all the quarterbacks that we talked about so far, there's no quarterback talent in the, NF, in the NFC, guys. It's not going to take much skill to get you many places in the NFC. Now, I'm but, not saying Carson Wentz is going to be in the NFC championship game because of how lower level the quarterback play is and how lower level the team play is. But I'm saying this, and even Tom is joking about it, Washington football team will low-key win the NFC East. That's what I'm saying. See, the, the talent is not there in the NFC at the quarterback play for it to really be so far-fetched to say, well, hey, why can't Carson Wentz win the NFC, uh, win the NFC East? Why can't he? I mean, really, realistically, when you break it down, I saw, uh, I saw a meme today. When you really break down the quarterback play of the NFC East, uh, somebody posted – Carson Wentz, Daniel Jones, and Jalen Hurts in the in the same division, and and they put in the caption a, a Trayvon Diggs uh, dream scenario, ten plus interceptions, e- easy said than done. But really, realistically, forget about the NFC East. The NFC as a whole, it's not going to take that much to win, and that's why I think that when you look at quarterbacks in this league, that's the hardest position to find. I'm not saying Carson Wentz is the long term answer, but in the immediate right now that will win you games and that may give you a playoff berth and i think that's where washington is at especially after losing out on a russell wilson see i i agree with you in an extent and i agree with tom they could low-key win the nfc's does carson win stay healthy i mean he did in indianapolis he did in indy he did in indy but He's back in the NFC East where he's been injured before. Not that I'm saying that's the reason. But also, I I just don't see him staying healthy the full season this year. Well, I mean, listen, man, you can't plan on injury, right? If you no, planned I mean, on injury, we, we could already predict the Super Bowl if that was the case. But <laughs> it's not. 
and, and because of that, I, I know what I'm saying may be a little outlandish and maybe a little too far fetched. And I'm probably going to eat my words come December and January uh, of the end of this year and the beginning of next year. But again, I, I think there's an argument to be made that if you're comparing and contrasting quarterbacks outside of Matthew Stafford and outside of Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback playing field is really even. You know, you have yeah. a Kyler Murray who's been inconsistent and injury prone. You don't even know if he's going to be with the Cardinals the way things are panning out with his contract discussion. You have Dak, who Dallas is literally completely collapsing, planning on releasing an Amari Cooper, planning on releasing a Demarcus Lawrence, dealing with uh, a running back who's aged and injury prone on a $100 million deal, and Dak Prescott, who got a huge deal and has yet to win in clutch moments and perform in clutch moments. It's not the – and Kirk Cousins, same type of situation. Again, they got a new head coach now, maybe different – play style from Zimmer, obviously defensive-minded guy, moving to an offensive-minded guy who worked under Sean McVay, maybe takes them in a whole new another stratosphere. But in terms of the quarterback play that we've already seen, guys, outside of Rodgers and Stafford, it's an equal playing field. And especially in the – guys, as Giants fans, we know. In the NFC East, this is a very, very winnable division with a Carson Wentz behind center. It is. Yep. It just is. Well, the NFC East is a very winnable division with – Daniel Jones behind center. So that's not really there. I can't really put a whole lot of like weight into that statement every year, no matter what it is, the NFC East is a crap shoot. It, it's the end of the day. Anyone could truly win that division. And I don't have a whole lot of faith in the Cowboys, uh, the, Cow <laughs> <laughs> the Cowboys. Uh, but besides that, at least you guys can agree with me there too. Uh, the Cowboys suck and they always will. My mm. girlfriend won't like to hear me say that. Um, but I say to her enough where it's kind of the truth at this point. Um, but the Carson Wentz doesn't really – yeah, you could you can win the division with him. You're not going to win a playoff game with him and with his Washington football team. They could have won the division with Taylor Heineke. They could have won the division with Fitzpatrick. It, it, Carson Wentz doesn't really elevate you at all. I mean, you take a look at their Super Bowl odds. They were before this trade, they're a plus five thousand. After the trade, they're plus five thousand. This doesn't do the this this isn't a a up and down movement. This is a this is a lateral. This mm -hmm. is a lateral and. They have a lot more issues than just quarterback. This might be a very small band-aid on what's truly really going on, but I for the val for the cost to bring Carson Wentz in, it's really not worth it when there are still a couple, I guess, decent free agents on the market. Jameis Wentz is going overlooked way too much. And he's also coming off a torn ACL. That's a huge factor. He's still better than Carson Wentz, though. I mean, we'll see. Right, he was good underneath a Sean Payton. Who's to say he'll be good underneath any other coach? That's kind of why people are alluding to the fact he's going to return to the Saints, not because Sean Payton's there, but because we know that it worked in that system. That'd be a dub for for the Saints of his. Jameis Winston is a legitimate starting quarterback in this league, and that I've been riding with him for for a little bit now. Ever since he cleaned up that LASIK. We've seen. <laughs> I know that's a that's that a nice, meme. Brayden. I know that's a meme, but we've seen a legitimate it's, difference it's, in Jameis since yeah, then, it's true. which is yep. crazy. Yeah. The, the meme has come to fruition, um, but it, th this move just doesn't mean any, in terms of talent on the field. This move means nothing for me um, for the Washington football team. It's they're not in a, a better position now. They're not in the worst position. They're still just. I'm sorry, I said I still say Washington football team. The commanders um, still have yet to take command of even their own front <laughs> office. So until they can get that situation uh, squared away, still the team, um, it I, I, they're just irrelevant. They're irrelevant. I do, I don't disagree. What I think that you what you've done is essentially Ross. What you said is it's a band aid. But all I'm saying is that I think it's enough to win in the NFC mm -hmm. in terms of, I think they could win the division. They have a good draft. They have a good free agency. They can win the division. That's how bad the division is. We all know we've all seen it. That's why it's been a revolving door of who's it's crowned to take this year. In fact, just last year we saw it was historically the worst division in NFL history because nobody wanted to win it. It seemed like towards <laughs> the latter part of the season. So it's very winnable. It's very winnable on top of the fact where I agree it's a bandaid. We know next year's class in terms of quarterback play is way better. So I agree with that. I agree with that. I think this is the Band-Aid for this year because not that many great quarterback prospects, but next year there is. But well, if you're going to move on next year, you should just roll with Heineke. 
I don't know if you could come back as a as a Washington football fan and roll it back with Heineken. Well, let me ask you this. If you're a Washington football team fan, right, or commander fan, my bad. If you're a commander's fan, right, after what you saw from Heineke this past season, are you really happy as a fan saying, oh, yeah, we're going to run it back with him again? In terms of cost, and so between him and Carson Wentz, in terms of cost, and you're if you're if they're doing what you really say is just kind of waiting year for the next draft class, well, you, you might as well tank because you're you might win your division. You're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs. Winning the NFC East doesn't mean anything. It's like winning a participation trophy in in is a youth player. All right, it. There's no value in winning that division. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, there's better while the the last the seventh seed is better than anyone that that division can produce. Even the eighth seed might be better than anyone that division can produce. So it means nothing to me. You might as well just tank. The value is not worth it. it. At the end of the day, the value is just not there. They're they're selling it a loss right now. Like in terms of the, their stocks, they're in the red. Mm-hmm. Carson Wentz is it. He's not it. Guys, I'm going to throw to you, but first, we have an ongoing conversation between Tom and, and Noah <laughs> in the comment section, just absolutely blasting this Washington football team. Um, wow. Holy wow. Got a lot to get to. Uh, <laughs> Washington have, having to settle for Carson Wentz. At, oh, we, we, we did that one already. We did that one. I know. I just wanted to see it again. Um, <laughs> it's great. The mighty Jacksonville Jaguars humiliated Carson Wentz. Eagles fans are elated. Carson Wentz can throw them passes again. Uh, <laughs> the Colts are still desperately trying to fix Luck retiring. That roster with Luck under center would have a Super Bowl by now. Yeah. Not even a doubt in my mind. I agree with you 100%. Agreed. At least uh, make it. Carson Wentz can throw passes to the Eagles again twice a year. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, no, Washington keeping a piece on that defense. That was absolutely lights out last year. Yeah. Um I think that was a I think that was a sarcastic comment. Okay. You know, that Chase okay. Young only played half the season and he and he wasn't that great when he played. Um so. and by lights oh there you go. And by oh, lights okay. out, I mean okay. the lights exploded and they're stuck in internal darkness. <laughs> there we go. We need a part two. <laughs> Say what we want about Kirk Cousins, but I haven't seen anyone since he left there that makes me say dumping him was a good decision. you I agree with you. Remember when the conversation was there's no way Kirk Cousins deserves all that money? Yeah. And now you're seeing, well, you haven't found his replacement yet. Um, the NFC outside of the West is an embarrassment to football. Uh, Tom, what is, what is banter for Kirk Cousins and support? Hey, no, Kirk Cousins is a top five quarterback in the NFC. Imagine if he was there now. That's true. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's, that's true due to the depths and levels that the NFC has taken in terms of quarterback play. Um, whatever Wentz won't win you games, he's injury prone. They better wrap him up in bubble wrap. Holy crap. Guys, the comments are exploding. Oh my God. Uh, Let's see. Oh, now it just goes into Mets commentary now. All right. We don't. We don't need to. We don't need to highlight <laughs> yeah, yeah. that. We don't need to highlight that. But guys, any final thoughts on this Carson Wentz trade before we wrap up the segment here? Yeah. Yay. This this trade has kept you guys speechless from what I'm from what I'm. Okay, getting right you now. um you you improve your quarterback and you you're you're the best of the worst. Okay, what do you what do you want me to give you a trophy? Okay, cool. The participation trophy. Yes, please. It's probably the only trophy Dan Steiner will ever see. Or, yeah, actually, no. The other example I was thinking besides Noah when they got car with the other funny example I was thinking of besides Noah when he said the going from Ferrari to the soccer mom station wagon would be like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer really wanted that fancy RV that had like all everything you could want it, and then he takes the crappy one and they go camping with it. Oh man, good stuff, guys. Good stuff. But Poverty I think we're franchise. slated. We're, we're we're slated for a very very entertaining offseason, to say the least. Especially in the NFL, where you don't see that much tremendous movement. But we've already seen within the first couple of days that we've seen some great stuff, and we hope it continues on to next week. But Ross, thank you again, man, for coming on. But before we let you go, make sure to plug in where our listeners can find you at. 
Yeah, you can call me a glader freshener because all I do is plug. Um, my name is Ross, of course. <laughs> I am man that runs. I'm glad that you thought that was funny. I, I was curious to see how that played. It sounded good in my head. Obviously, it didn't it played out fairly well. Um, of course, I'm the head guy over at Fourth Long Radio. You can find all of our stuff. Best way to find it is um, our website. That's at the fourth and long.com. You could stream everything from there directly. We're all over Instagram and Twitter. I have no life and I have way too much time on Twitter. So you can find us at fourth long radio. Um, like I said, there's my proof of two weeks ago with my um, Carson Wentz to the commander statement and way too accurate. Cause it was more than just him going. Oh, I, I feel so bad for my Washington fans, man. But like, you can you, feel good though, man. You can feel good about your team. So it's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's no, well, yeah. I, I feel I I feel pretty damn good about Russell Wilson. There you go. There's that smile <laughs> to say the least, face. man. As long uh, Wilson is time for a new era in Denver, so you guys better stick around for that and watch out because the Broncos are Super Bowl contenders now. Now I'm not just saying that as bias. They legitimately are one of the best teams in the AFC. So I'm actually excited to see what they can do this year, but. Fellas, it's always a blast uh, chalking it up with you guys, and um, I'll I'll keep my fingers crossed that the Giants find the quarterback soon. <laughs> Maybe like, no. d- don't I wouldn't hold my breath, but you guys got this. Are right? you can't mess up worse than the Commanders did, so you got that going for you. We'll see what happens, man. But Ross, <laughs> thank you as always, man, for joining us, and uh, we'll be talking come draft time, come off season time in terms of what your Denver Broncos do. Cause I know they're going to be extremely relevant when it comes to playing football games in next January, because they will be a playoff team and they will be a contender for sure. Without a doubt. I need to give myself another one of these hats for the next Super Bowl. <laughs> Ross, thank you as always, man. And have a great rest of your night.